Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cultures Football Podcast. I'm James, I'm joined as always by Fionn and Michael and today we have a very special guest, the titan of the away day, the connoisseur of the classic shirt and the god of the gaffers, it's Ellis Platten everybody! Woo! That is an unreal, the god of the gaffers is so good, I'm putting that on my, um, on my tombstone if I die. <laughs> When I die, and not if, it's not if, if. If, yes. <laughs> if, it, if is ambitious. <laughs> oh, very glad to have you. Thank you so much for coming on and joining us. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I'm buzzing to be. I'm interested to see what I imagine we're going to go down some Barclaysman stuff. I'm just interested to see where we go, basically. Yes. Oh, well, it's funny you mentioned I was the Leeds, Leeds fan, um, you know, over the, 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 the sort of. The, the, the higher box has been the past couple of weeks. I feel bad because I've, I've got a bit of a, I've got as a Liverpool fan. I don't know why, but I have got a bit of a soft spot for Leeds. I think I don't know, just a just uh, a mutual hatred of United. I think. Probably. Yes, yeah. there's, there's that <laughs> one I reason. I was going to say the the lovely kits, uh, the, the, the the badges. Don't talk um, shite, James. <laughs> mutual, mutual love. Hey, the the Nike O2 Strongbow. It's just yes. an absolute yeah. perler. Um, but I, we were we were discussing this between us about you know Leeds, Barclaysman, and maybe sort of Leeds. Barclaysman. Yeah, while some didn't yeah. play, it, some didn't play during that period. There was some before that kind of then went on to play for for other clubs. But out of the, out of that Leeds team, are there any sort of the, that you remember or that you think, oh yes, nailed on Barclaysman? Yeah, I think what the one that obvious the obvious one is Viduka. Because obviously, like yeah, he, yeah. he didn't play for us in the Barclays era, but then went on to Middlesbrough and then whatever. And then, but like he was so good. The four against Liverpool, like just so good. Um, like uh, there was probably better players in the team. You know, one of them was a rat who went to Galatasaray. But like other than that, like like he was really <laughs> like he was the one. I loved him. Like, I loved him so much. Like, like one of the ones growing up because I grew up in the doldrums of Leeds. Like the, probably, and you, we'd look back fondly and I'd be like, ah. Oh, we played in the Premier League in Europe. Like, this is what it could have been. And then I got Hereford away. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that, that, you cherish the Hereford away is when, when the Leeds are inevitably back in the Premier League. So, Yeah, exactly. And I think that about as well, like, say Man City go to down, they, well, they won't, obviously, they, they won't. But say they did go to, like, the National League. Mm. I think their fans would love that. A bit different. Like, it's like, just see different things. Like, it's, it's class. Like, the best away games you can have, like the not not losing to Histon. Admittedly, that wasn't great, but <laughs> they're, they're, they're just, just so classy. Just seeing Leeds in different places, yeah. And I think, yeah, we, yeah, I will. And then, like, because I had that journey as a kid, I think it formed me to like accept just like mediocrity, or even less. So now, like, when any, when we win a game, I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's nice. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, as, as a fan of the, uh, as a fan of Middlesbrough, because Middlesbrough, um, I think you do get to. Uh, you, you have a bit, I think lower league fans have a better, uh, well, not lower league, but anyone who doesn't support a top six club, basically, um, it gets a better sense of just a better philosophy on life. You should expect to lose in life. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have you seen? And then we cherish the wins more because they mean more. It's like, yeah. I, I could not, I'm like, like, there was a tweet going around the other week about how Real Madrid fans were complaining, saying that. And I was like, shut up. Please yeah. shut up. I despise yeah. everything to do with your football club and especially your title. Like, just you don't know what being a football fan is. You don't. Yeah. Like, sorry, you don't. You don't know what it means to suffer. We deal with the lows to then feel the high. That I, is, I is basically the sport. I had a look at um, uh, like uh, when they won the Champions League, somebody said, like, oh, these fans have never had like a drought or whatever at Real Madrid. I looked at where the longest. The longest uh, drought in Real Madrid, trophy drought in Real Madrid history, six years from 1939 to 45. So, uh, <laughs> Has anything happened in that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but in a, but yeah, Spain, Spain, in the Spanish didn't, uh, Spanish were neutral, I felt like neutral, Franco neutral. Um, so they carried on playing, uh, but yeah. And then they t- he, still, he said, uh, it said in the thing, oh, it's actually technically seven years, but the, the year before, they didn't play because of the Spanish Civil War. So, so you've six oh. years and they're trying to asterisk an extra year on. Ridiculous. Yeah. If Leeds won something every six years, I'd be, I'd be amazing. I'd be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, that was amazing. 
Have you seen the yeah. backstory with Viduka from when he was a child in Australia and, 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 and that? It's a bit wild. So there's there's quite a, um, a good documentary, I think, out on him um, where he's got uh, the Australian kit on. But um, he wasn't looked upon too favourably um, in Australia because he was he held on to his Croatian heritage. And there was there was a quote good. from there was, there was there was a quote from someone, and I'm I'm quoting the exact here, but this is an Australian blogger, I guess, at the time. Is it necessary to give the fascist salute and kiss the badge whenever he scores? Kiss the Croatian badge whenever he scores? If he loves Croatia so much, you should return to the land of his parents. So, no, no, no. yeah, he, he, I don't think, I think football yeah. in the 90s in Australia was like looked upon as like a foreigner's sport. It uh, well, not to, uh, you know, sort of oh, put an <laughs> emphasis on the, uh, <laughs> on the fern I, I, there, I, I, but I, I think I, we can I, all agree uh, Viduka is just the poor man's. Well, I actually, I actually have a theory about Australia being um, the fact that Leeds actually went down from the Premier League. Because um, if you look at the squad in the season before they went down, there was five Australians in Leeds' squad. And the season they went down, they sold, they sold every single one of them in the summer. So had the Australians been there, that includes, I think, is it, what was he? Uh, Shane Cansdale, Sheriff, Harry Kuehl, Mark Viduka. Um, what was the other one called? Burns? Is it Burns? Was it Burns? Something like that. I actually, you know, but this is the problem, right? I could tell you, I could talk to you about Eddie Lewis, you know, oh, wow. USA International scored a free kick against Preston. I then went into school the next week and made a fictional book about him. Um, about how much <laughs> oh, um, that was that was my, and then was we went it, and got back to about what Mike Grella, or Did you have two two Americans at the same time? Did you yeah, Mike Grella. Mike, no, Mike Grella was a bit later. He was League One. Right. Grella was, and he was right. he was he was like, but then went on to be like a New York Red Bulls like legend. And that is really just terrible for us. Um, <laughs> we are, we, 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 we had like Trezor Kandal was terrible. Enoch Shawanmi just. Enoch Shawanmi, Tramir legend. Wow. How on earth he was Jay playing Kansel football Shepard professionally, is. do not know. Like just absolutely just ridiculous. <laughs> Some of the people who played Tori Andre Flo when his legs couldn't work anymore. And yeah, that was who yeah. I, was, I was seeing play for Leeds, basically. They had some, they had was, some cult heroes. So you like Kasper Ankergren. Yeah, yeah, I hated him, but people loved him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paddy Kisnorbo, people loved oh. him. He wore a bandage around his head. Oh. Richard Nader. Yeah. yeah, we had that. That The team in League One we had, by the way, if you look at the careers they went and had, Snodgrass, Gradle, Becky O, Beckford, Howson, Bradley Johnson. Like, just an unbelievable team of players that played in League One. And then we, it took, took us two, three years to get out of it. It's yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah. When Becchio jo- signed for uh, Norwich, he joined up with one of House and Snodgrass and Johnson. We're all at yeah. Norwich already. Yeah, that, so obviously I'm a Leeds fan growing up in Norfolk as well. So like, how does that, that thing go? I was peppered. I was bullied in <laughs> Norfolk for being a Leeds fan. You know, from Norwich fans, I was bullied for being a Leeds fan. You know, I think that is going into school. I was chubby. I was overweight. And I was like, getting pe- was the fat Leeds fan. That's what I was. The fat Leeds fan. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, the, um, we, we, the, sorry, yeah, the, the, we, we, we do have oh. a sorry, Phil. We do have a cause to actually be best friends as well, Ellis, um, which you don't know. But um, on one of your videos, you 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 put onto into the world that York City till I die. Yeah. So, um, I just want to quickly ask you about your experience at York City and been Yorkie, and and are you still York City till you die? Yeah. See, I've, <laughs> it's amazing some statements people say, and I don't recall saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's not there for the uh, world to see I'm going to get it put on a pillow <laughs> I remember it was New Year's Eve three, two, three years ago and I laid there um, and I had food poisoning and I was just a video idea came to my head and I was like what if I just became a football club's mascot for the day like, would a club let me do it and I didn't I tweeted out about it the next day and loads of clubs reached out some football league clubs replied and I was like they don't they're not good. It's not good to do that. And by me mascot, I mean like actually in the suit mascot, yeah, not yeah. Mm. Um, not like holding the players' hands walking. Yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, I've I've done that <laughs> as well. That's a different story. But like that is, we did that, and then York replied, and I was like, then in the national league, there'd be a bit less annoyance with dealing with things. And I know Yorkie the Lion is like a very vi- you guys tweeted out a clip about it this yeah. week, right? About like yeah, 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 yeah. 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 round. And also, <laughs> people don't talk about how horrible it is to be a mascot. The suit is awful. It's so hot. I um, I saw the Yeah, it was great. And the then you well you know, are flying. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The suit, and then you have to buy it. And then the bike, he's cycling, yeah. but in these ridiculous clown-sized shoes. 
doesn't. It's. I, I don't get how the bloke ever did it properly. Yeah. As per performance art, isn't it? The. Um, wow. Well, I was. I was, was going to say about the as well the Johnny Johnny House and you know it's uh, you know Lee especially Leeds for you and Borough for me and uh, Norwich as well. Um, but um, I remember when we beat United on penalties in the uh, Carabao a while back. You could tell it was that was a proper uh, Leeds moment for him because, like, in front of the Stratford and he just did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to uh, not, not to make another tenuous link, but a bit of a, a New Zealand and, and Leeds connection under a certain Danny Hay. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? Huge. No. Danny Hay, four appearances for Leeds. Uh, oh. <laughs> Kane made his debut as a 45th minute substitution for Lucas rather than being a 4 3 win over Tottenham Ellen Road. Anyone? <laughs> Danny Hay. It's coming up for Lucas Radaby is an honour. But yeah. that's like a. Yeah, it's just a shame he's clearly abysmal. <laughs> what <laughs> year was that? Pardon? What year was that? Really played three, he must have been awful. Yeah, he's made four caps and then he went to uh, Walsall. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. God, yeah, what, class, what year was that? Uh, that was. That was uh, 1999 to 2002, so four appearances over three years. Oh, he walked yeah. so Chris Wood could run. That was yeah. awesome. um, Chris Wood, what a man. What a man. Oh, dude, I'd love to kiss him on the forehead. Anyway, we're not here to talk about it. <laughs> uh, I'd love to, I think the, the mascot uh, aspect is kind of something that I'd say needs to be needs to be brought back. I think, you know, I mean, Liverpool never had a mascot. It's always been like, like, when, like, it's always been a kid or someone. Whereas, like, you know, it was... It, we, I don't think we've had be, a just be, it should just be a big fucking purple bin. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, like, West Brom brought the ideal boiler man in. Yes. Like, with an absolute stroke of genius, in my opinion. Uh, there was the Partick Thistle Sun. Yeah. Uh, you know... Oh, yeah, yeah. At the I Tony think, Macaroni. I think it's something that needs to be... You know, even them... Um, what was the Man City one? Moon... Oh. Oh, that yeah, your moon bot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, what? Woke nonsense. Giant. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, I agree. Like, we had Lucas the cop cat, and he just vanished. Like, it leads just vanished. He like, just went and fell off the face of the earth. <laughs> what happened to him? Like, bring him back. And well, half, look, half look, time I've, I've not seen, well. I've not seen Rory the lion at uh, a borough game in a long, long time. Rory spelled R O A R Y. Yeah, so, yeah. There's this intelligence there. Anyway, we do have some actual, we do have some actual proper questions, don't we? Yeah. You, yes. Ellis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's um, nonsense we've been going on for that twenty minutes. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, you, you, you're in, you're an aficionado of of the away day. Um, I mean, you've been on some fantastic ones. Is is the one in particular that that stands out? Yeah, so I remember when me and Ben, who's like my mate who comes on a lot of them, he's just uh, he Ben is works isn't a YouTube, uh, he's just a uh, he works in water, like he's a water, like he's not a plumber but works in water basically. But I remember, like, <laughs> he's a water, swimmer. He's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's he actually related to Michael Phelps. He's uh, really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah he's, he's, not, he's very casual about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our dream was to go to La Bombonera. And we were like, oh. we'll never actually be able to do it. We're both from very, like, I remember when we first started, I was working at McDonald's to fund away days and, like, we both didn't have any income or whatever, really, to justify it. And then the channel's obviously got to the point now where we're able to do it. And then we went there to watch Boca River last year and it was just like, what are we doing? Like, it's just I, like a completely different thing. Like, you can do, European away days are amazing. They're really special as well. But, like, it's two hours on Ryanair and you're there, which obviously still, I cherish and love every single one we, of them we do still. Even they... Even this weekend, the one they did ridiculously cool to do it, but like it was just special. You fly to the other side of the world, it's this whole different culture, a whole different atmosphere, and it's like this thing you see all the time on social media, games, and you're younger. It's like the Super Classico is, is the one, is it? Yeah. The game? I thought it was a great video. Um, yeah, like uh, uh, <laughs> the, the opening 10 minutes are the most depressing thing I've ever seen with the, <laughs> the cancellations and the flights to, to 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 Frankfurt and stuff. But then like the joy on your face and things. I even made a note of um, you went in that little shop and there was the uh, Bocker jumper there. I was like, yeah. I want that jumper. And then yeah. you had it on in the game. So I just want to know if you can still get them and how much they are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were they, there they um a cardinal sin of mine and there's no fakes, but I think it was it's just like uh, out of dodgy shit outside the box. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Do you still have the Maradona jumper? 
I do still have the Maradona jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is um, a glory. Where where was that from? A place called Saturday's Football. So they they do like knitted ones. They do like Ronaldinho. They do like all kinds of different ones. They're really really cool. I really like. I like what they do. Like Shout Saturday's Football. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought no, it's it, it went from the most depressing start to such a wonderful video, and then in such like a turn of brilliant British poetic beauty, it was all ruined by Solomon Rondon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. What are the chances of that? You fly all the way over the world to see Rondon score. Like, is that how ridiculous? And then the, Boca didn't even, Boca did nothing. And then they conceded the worst goal I've ever seen. Oh, like, that's just defensively goal, horrendous. Yeah. Well. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I never saw, and we've got this theme on away days where nothing, there's always something that goes wrong. And the Boca one, people will always say it's self inflicted because the connection was bad, but like, not like, about 15 other people did the same thing as us. They were doing this connection through Madrid and then going on to it. And then we just getting stuck in Frankfurt for like six hours was just like... Yeah, yeah. Just, but that's it, the beauty of it, I guess. And also me it's being... It's the end goal, isn't it? It's the end goal. Yeah, yeah you were that. just... Like, and you sort of don't care about no sleep and you're off to watch something that's like crazy like that. And you yeah, got to I see think. two of my football yeah. manager 24 linchpins in... Um, was it Chabalos and Barco? They, Marco, they both yeah, played yeah, yeah. Is it Brighton Barco. now? Is he? That's is probably Brighton? Yorkshire pronunciation of Sabios, oh, by the way. Chebolos. Chebolos? <laughs> ah, that <laughs> Chebolos. <laughs> he's a player, that Chebolos. Sabios. <laughs> Sabios. <laughs> yeah, but he's um he's now uh, on loan at Sevilla, isn't he? Well, it, yes, I, had a, yeah. I was looking through uh, their squads for the games, especially River. I, like, none of the players that played in that game are there anymore. They're all different sides of it, including Rondon. They're all, yeah, they're on it. It feels like a proper moment in time, that game, where it's like, also, it was the, probably the one Super Classico that Boca were more focused on the Libertadores because they were in the semifinals for it the next mm. day. And I was like, or the next few days, I was like, well, how have we done that? I was like, we've been doing that. That's the thing as well, isn't it? Like, with the Argentine, because I, I follow the Argentinian League and I watch quite a few of them because I'm a degenerate gambler. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but like, <clears throat> like, there's... Only one a year, isn't there? So it's like there's not as if there's at a home and away. There's only one a year, so and it might be at the, uh, uh, it might be at River Plate's ground or something. So it's like there's probably not another one for maybe two years or something. So, it's like it's like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like there's a fallow, there's a fallow year every year. But the, uh, what, we, uh, to go for from the best, the best is always nice to know about, obviously. But uh, the worst, Ellis, what's the worst? Just I, I, we so I do did this series on the channel where we've thankfully we had a sponsor last season, so it made it viable. I wanted to try hospitality seats because, like, I think it's just shite. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I, I get why you do it. Uh, and some instances actually good value, but sometimes it's like, so we did Real Madrid, and I, I think I said it, I just don't get the club. I don't, it just is a tourist yeah, attraction, yeah. it's not, it's yeah, not to me. And we went to it, and the Bernabeu has been renovated, and it doesn't look good. It looks terrible. Yeah, it's um, so one of the new age kind of stadiums now, isn't it? Where they, they lose all the kind of not atmosphere, but like the the the, the yeah the, from the outside looking in, it's like a bit of, there's no like a John Lewis. It literally looks like a John Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no atmosphere at all, and it was terrible atmosphere. The hospitality offering was bad, but like I knew that going in because people would just pay it because Real Madrid. We sat at the very top of the stadium. And the only time there was an atmosphere was when them whistling the ref because they've got this weird vendetta that the refs are against them, which is the most yeah mental. the most successful club yeah. in world football yeah yeah, yeah just just awful. <laughs> I just I, I cannot stress how much I never want to go near the Bernabeu again. Yeah, not... and what do you get? What do you get? The people who've got everything in the way, isn't it? It's like the kind of uh, yeah Thanos mentality of like I've acquired <clears> this. I remember on the Beckham documentary, there's a bit where he gets signed and. Um, I've forgotten the president's name now. The guy Perez, gives was the, it? Perez, yeah. He gives the season ticket to the Pope when he goes to visit him, doesn't he? He like just chucks out him and goes, Hey, well, you're welcome. Um, but there's a bit <laughs> where like he, he's showing back around these like skyscrapers in Madrid and he goes like uh, Carlos, uh, Raul, Ronaldo, uh, Beckham. And I was like, mate, you're just like un unreal. The fact that you're able to like reel off all those names and have that pull. I mean, was, I don't you know, like maybe looking looking back at it obviously that team's phenomenal but now it's you know like i say it's gotten to a point where and not just on the football side of things but like it's saturated and it become like quite diluted but yeah like you say it's just the tourist that's right even like the new camp you know like yeah, yeah. I, I imagine that's still something that i'd love to go but at the same time 
I don't want to pay 100 euros for a, mm. you know. Well, there'll be, there'll be no Real Madrid players go down in cult folklore anymore, will there? Because they're all right. elevated. To, so, like, even like the biggest one, Raul, like, it, from my era, he's still a cult hero. He's still brilliant. Yeah. Even though he was there. Whereas now they're all, I don't know. I, I don't Fernando want to be Gago, anybody. Fernando Gago. Fernando Gago. Yeah. <laughs> what a player. That's I all think, I, can, I can think of. I think Man City fall into the same trap now as well. They yeah. just replace world class player, world class player. So it's like, mm. who is the like Jack Grealish is? They're not going to remember him in ten years. They're not going to talk about the Jack Grealish times, even though they want to talk about him. Especially after they ruined it. But, but like, like, like the uh, the other day when it's like, oh no, City Rodri, Rodri's coming off. Who's coming on for him? Kovacic. Oh right, Kovacic oh, from a Real Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh right, what a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It, it amazes, like I know Rodri's an amazing player, and they were like, "How will we cope without Rodri?" And then, like you say, they sort of him for another like unbelievable yeah. player. Like, <laughs> I think it, it was even I think it was a tweet Wolves put out the other day, or it might have been a Wolves fan account, and it was um, we're going into the game this weekend against Liverpool with only two centre backs, and it's like gone are the days football clubs recognise that they've got like defenders in the reserves and the under 18s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. How, how are you going to find it? Like, oh, no, we didn't We didn't manage to pick up a 21-year-old from Venezuela, so he can't go into the team. But, <laughs> like, John Phillips from Wolverhampton, he's, no, nah, he doesn't count. Like, <laughs> it's so strange football now, because you've got, like, they used to be part of the squad. You don't have to register them. You could find the next big superstar teams, like Wolves can make a bit of cash off them, but probably spend it on a Portuguese player. But... Mm. It is very no. strange. It's, it's bleeding down into 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 different facets of football, isn't it? It's it's balmy. Did have you been to Atletico? It's like a like a comparison. No, I haven't. I need to do that. I need to do more. I've only done in Spain. I've done Benidorm. You know what Ooh. club? Benidorm. <laughs> um, I think it's just that, and then Real Madrid, Barca. The only ones I've done. I've I, if I've forgot any, that's really entitled of me. But I think it's just them three. <laughs> I, I, I went to Almeria. Um, yeah. that, that was That's on the channel that, if anybody wants to watch yeah, it. It's somewhere on the channel, yeah. somewhere. Um, and then there's the my fate, my fate, abiding memory is they had like this football dartboard thing, and then like there's this, like, like it was for kids, obviously. And then someone's dart had just taken over and was like running around getting the ball off the kids. That was funny. Uh, and then I found <laughs> out that then I found out they're owned by the Saudis as well. So that's sort of like uh, Al Maria, um, yeah, yeah. Really? They're, owned, they're owned by that guy who does the um, who does the bot Turkey Al Al Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I did that. I've done the Mastaya, which was good. Uh, oh, that's a great show. Got a photo with a cardboard cutout of Kevin Gamera. <laughs> Kevin Gamera. <laughs> yeah. And, you, uh, you see the way you guys proper caught on that they were doing like the league, the league as men as well. Or yeah, like, oh, yeah. Season, wasn't it? Or something like that. And, like I saw Pablo Hernandez got one. I was like, loving that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's it's like to Argentina, Argentina as well. Yeah, as well, and like Abel Hernandez was on there, I think, as well, and a few <laughs> other people. So <laughs> it was crazy. The minutes so I mentioned Canizares, I was like, well, we could, we could, well, we could, should do a little league as well. Caught on. Um, I think what what's great about your videos, though, is like, I suppose within the football fan, like every time I watch one, especially like, and the one you did with with Smith was really good. Is that like every time I watch one, I'm like. God, I really want to like go on one now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, like see on the mic, but every time I watch it, I'm like, I really want to just book a flight to <laughs> Germany and just give up work and drive around. Yeah, I think we we operate in this weird space as well, where YouTube is full of like. So I have to do like a YouTube thumbnail and title like, because of my job. So like, I kill myself with cringe looking at some of the thumbnails we do. But like, I have to give you. Oh, but like I feel like I, yeah, it's, it does, it's <laughs> the content is like so night and day to some other people who do very similar stuff to what we do. Like I'm not like I don't sugarcoat things. I don't pretend things are really good. We went to Salford mm. the other week and I just hated it. So I was honest. I was like, this is this mm. is shit. I was like, I don't. <laughs> this is really is, is, the peninsula is not a, is not a but footballing cathedral. It isn't, is it? No, it's just pubs in the middle of a community who like aren't interested in football. The closest pub's a mile away. They they put it away from the centre of Salford, and everyone there is either a student or their first team is Man U. It's yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. Just That's what it's like being from York. Pub. It's a really strange yeah, thing. My uncle always like uh, well, so York has a similar population to Norwich, and you're in Norwich. Ninety percent of people from Norwich. Are... <laughs> no, no, no. Ninety percent of the people from Norwich are Norwich fans, but ninety yeah. percent of the people in York. 
uh, Man United, Liverpool, Leeds. Like, so you only get like four or five thousand people going to watch York City week in, week out. And yeah, it's uh, killed the club how many mm-hmm. times? <laughs> I, I went to a, I went to Union Salford and they were they were literally just handing out like ticket ticket play, yeah. memberships. They were like, please, just we need you to go. Yeah. <laughs> A bit like with Man City on Champions League nights. Yeah. The atmosphere was proper bad. Like, proper, proper bad. Like, to the extent you can hear... It's weird when you're in the Football League and you can hear the players talking on the pitch. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, you could hear just, like, everything Carl Robinson was saying really weird. Also feels like he's shouldn't be there yet. I feel like he's, like, he's he, should, he doesn't have a League One job in him before he goes there. It really weird. <laughs> Yeah, he's, ma- he's managed all the plastic clubs as well. He's Forest Green, MK mm. Dons, and so collects them, yeah. <laughs> uh, in- Infinity Stones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's next? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, so what's the what's the worst one in England? Because there must there must be a, some terrible ones in England you've been to. Um, Would it be Rushton that you put on yourself? Was it? Or... No, God, that, that was that video was a mess. Like I was really, I really, I, keen... I thought it was class. To be fair, I but thought like, it was. It's so horrible because we didn't really it became the, it just Ben the guy. So basically, the, those who don't know, listeners, we we basically ran a club's football hospitality for the day, uh, and we we thought we'd sort we'd give ourselves twenty four hours to source all the food. And then my mate Ben, the head chef, he decided to do four different main courses. And I was like, <laughs> "You're an idiot! Just do one." <laughs> it, 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 it was it was when he was in supermarket night before, and he bought one bo- one pack of but- pack of butter. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What's he doing?" Oh, I guess I'm like, pack. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't just went own brand. Um, <laughs> but they, yeah, he just he just is an idiot, and he looked properly like not even like well, obviously, like I said, we don't really fake it. So it's like he was just, but like, actually, really sad. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we're trying to make a video, and he's like properly sad about what he's done. Um, <laughs> the worst probably would be. It's not the worst because I actually really like it. Like a local long name scene called Roxham. This is just like I said, we had like I said, we had no money and like didn't have a coat back in the day. So we went to this club called Roxham and I think it was like mid November. And me and Ben to this day still talk about it's the coldest we've ever been. Like just <laughs> we were going, we haven't to leave the game every five minutes to go and just run our hands under a hot tap. Like I remember oh, us I... looking at each other like nearly crying. <laughs> that just to make this video that was gonna get like six hundred views. And I was like, no, we need to do it. And Ben was like, please, can we go? And I remember that same day, Alex Mowat scored a last minute equaliser for Leeds against Birmingham. So it wouldn't, no, it would have been like March, because I remember we were struggling. And then we got a point that, like, <laughs> how is he single? Um, like, just like, <laughs> like being problematic with, with, this, with this point. Uh, yeah. And then that was the one. Barnet was really shit. Went to Barnet a few years ago, terrible atmosphere, the hive. I think I've heard they might be moving again, but that doesn't that can't. Mm. That can't. They're, they're top at league at minute. York are second. That, yeah, Dean Brennan, the, interesting character, right? Yeah, mm. the, yeah, the guy, that was the guy. Yeah, the character guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They share their ground, don't they? Is it Saracens or something? Or they share? They share their they ground. Share, they, they share it a lot with Arsenal women's, but I don't know if the Arsenal women's have just now played most as Emirates. But I saw a North London derby between Arsenal and Tottenham there, uh, and that was that was fun. But the actually Barnet game went to was terrible. Mm-hmm. John Motson supports Barnet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't be that's my only wow. memory of Barnet. There you go. I've yeah. done. I've, I've done all of them. Yeah. Right, and I've been to Turkey for my own Barnet. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I did all of them away. I did all of them away, and they only had uh, one pie. For uh, my mates, Tramway fans, I went to go watch Tramway Behold. They had one pie for uh, how many Tramway fans are there? Maybe like a thousand. <laughs> and over the night, it was literally like Mars bars and like cans of Coke. When you say and, one pie, do you mean they had one pie in stock or just one type of pie? Uh, one pie in stock. <laughs> 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 and it was like, oh, who's got it, lads? Who's got the keys on you? Um, Could they not have made it over to the other stand and just ran some pies over to the I away? Thought, I thought this because it was a, it was only a Carabao Cup tie. Like surely, you know, we've got. Yeah, we had, had it at Bradford away when we were, we played them in the uh, Carabao. Like, they're saying, uh, "Oh, we, we've run out, of, we've run out of beer." And then, like someone, some uh, um, someone exclaimed, but "How, how is that possible?" In exactly those words, and nothing stronger. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, it was and like she went, uh, like the woman went, Oh, well, we didn't expect this many people. You didn't expect this many people despite having 3,000 tickets sold. What do you mean? 
<laughs> I, I love Boundary Park, but I loved going. It was a really lovely stage and like bumped in the middle of, you know, Terrence. Oh. Horrible place, Boundary Park. I went once in the 90s and they beat York 4 1. York scored it last minute and they played the Rugrats theme tune over the town. I went to The problem is, I'll not oh, go back. <laughs> the problem is, is that there's no, like, we couldn't find anywhere to go for a drink beforehand. So there is, there is something quite depressing. A number of grounds have this problem of, like, you kind of got to have a pre match pint at Frank and Benny's. And yes. The, the 1950s Italian American vibe combined with. <laughs> yeah. you got this, Sinatra on the speakers before yeah. you go in uh, <laughs> we did this, we did, I did the Kassam with uh, Stumpeg and other content creators of a, of a week and like they have like a Hollywood bowl and that's where people go for yeah. pre-match yeah, yeah. And, and well, that's at York as well in the bowling yeah. alley next to York it's all in a complex and that's yeah, yeah. what, that's what really? they all are now yeah it's, it's very yeah. It's mad yeah like, yeah, and it's like yeah, it's re- the retail parkification of football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gone at days of a little pub crawl before and after the game. Like yeah, and now it's yeah. like a a shuttle bus. <laughs> you know what? It's, actually, to be fair, Norwich is good for that. Norwich, the Carrow yeah. Road, you train there, and there's loads of pubs nearby. Like I'll give them that. Yeah, me, yeah, me no, and James loosely to... discussed it earlier. Like I potentially go into like a few of the the traditional old grounds because James liked the look of uh, Ipswich on a telly earlier and th- things like that. So. So some grounds that uh, still have the ethos of maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've, not got to, uh, you've not got to have like a sort of meat, meatballs in IKEA with the with the away fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can go to Dog and Duck for a for a warm ale, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, nip in. I went to I went to Crew and Blackburn last year. They they have similar kind of. Uh, eat well, Blackburn, there. Right. They were, they were, Blackburn was ace. Um, it was a great place to be fair. As, as, as was Crew. Crew, the staff there were ace with me and kids, and that. they were mint. So, yeah, I'd go nice. back to crew. Yeah, we have some more questions, do we not, James? Yes, we oh. do. Uh, I mean, go, I'd go back to crew is a sentence not many people have <laughs> yeah. um, Unless it's a train <laughs> connection. <laughs> um, odd, odd, we've talked about, you know, a bit of a bad aspect there, you know, kind of having a pint at a, a, a chain restaurant. But in your opinion, Alice, what, what, what makes the perfect away day for you? I think it is going with mates or like, I, I know a lot of people go over years and I, it's different for me because obviously the club I support, I'm on a, I've been on a season ticket waiting list for five years. So like, I don't really get to talk about an away game with my fans. Mm. But like, in terms of like an away day in mind, I see going with friends to somewhere completely obscure, rocking up, looking at some of the local things to see. I, I get that a lot of the culture in this country is drinking around it. But for me, like I'd rather remember... The yeah, football, yeah. like just in case something fun happens. But the the most fun that happens on an away day, and I think everyone agrees that this is always the to and froing, talking about whatever with your mates, naming random Premier League footballers on a train, <laughs> like, <laughs> make, make a podcast about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just like name around, and then like just talking about just like how many pints to do X Y Z. Just like you know, mm-hmm. but do X Y Z. I don't mean people. I mean that could have been really <laughs> different, like, <laughs> different thing. So, um, just like having just a freedom to not worry about like life situations for a few hours is is, is great. Yeah. And I think that is well. There's always an open invite here to Ellesmere Park to come and watch um, Vauxhall Motors. If you want to... <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's probably one of the best away days you'd probably be able to do in the the backdrop of the Vauxhall factory there. And Ellesmere Port yeah. isn't isn't there, isn't there a really good truck stop there? <laughs> for um, what? <laughs> there's like a Ooh. Ellesmere Port is has got I used to work so obviously before I went full time on YouTube I was a social media manager and I managed the social media for like one of the biggest haulage companies they're based in Norwich they're just like a they cut it's so boring sorry <laughs> no go on it was a cashless payment system so lorry drivers could don't have to pay money and claim it back they just do it and they go straight to the haul yeah. but the, be, the best truck stop in the country is in Ellesmere Port is it really? Yeah. Good well, form. Yeah. wow there you go there should be what signs. An endorsement. What an endorsement! Yeah, there yeah. should be signs up all of it, all of it, players. <laughs> <laughs> just, just quickly back on uh, Barclays Manage. I'm just looking at the squad that Leeds had when they went down. Riddled, riddled. riddled with Barclays. It is, it is gushing with Barclays Manage. Yeah, the two goalkeepers, <laughs> Paul Robinson and Scott Carson. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's quintessential, isn't it? How Gary did Kelly. You know? How did I have know? Know. But I was looking um, that summer. Oh, the summer before they made thirty-seven million pound in transfer fees. 
from a yeah, sailor Rio Ferdinand. I know point. it was Risdale, but I know we that must dream. have been bad. Yeah, we lived the dream. It was, it was how much yeah. they were paying people as well. Like Danny Mills was on like I think hundred k a week at the time. <laughs> in oh, two thousand and four. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, oh. <laughs> that's like just... yeah, I'm paying Danny Mills four hundred grand a week. <laughs> no, I, that might be, I might have made that up, but it was a lot of money. Basically, it's funny just to think about that, like, even if it, you know, yeah, it, even I if it isn't real. Leeds is biggest Barker's men, and he classes as a Barker's men because we're, we're, we class from the early 2000s onwards, 2001 onwards, yeah, yeah is definitely 100% without doubt Eric Barker. You think? Oh, Eric Barker was phenomenal. Uh, my, I've been to Ellen Road once. It was in 2000, 2001. It was against Malaga um, in the UEFA Cup. It was Michael Bridges' comeback game after a long <laughs> fell out injured. Um, he came off injured after nine minutes and Robbie Fowler replaced him. Um, they had Dario Silva up front who went on to play for Portsmouth. He had silver hair at the time. And Eric Backer scored in that game. And yeah, he was just he was just great. And he was a, he was a hangover from a great period. But the, like you look at it, like Jason Wilcox and David Batty Aaron Lennon and Milner were obviously in the squad. Viduka, Alan Smith, Lamine Sacco. I mean, yeah. How did? I don't, but you read that and it's like this should have stayed up. Really. Should have. Yeah. It just just shows how how much it can affect with like shit going on behind scenes, doesn't it? Like because it yeah. must have just been terrible to, to a very play with young um, a very young Aaron Lennon as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the but, yeah, I, I've heard players talk about like the next summer. I feel like Fraser Richardson, like as he then got his debut. We went down. Yeah, um, yeah. He's um, yeah, just a proper Kevin Blackwell era player. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, Black, I, I remember because, um, like saying, I became kind of an ad hoc Leeds fan because Leeds fans in York lost interest when they went down, and I was at Centre Parks on holiday um, with my dad <laughs> <laughs> when, when Leeds played the first game in um, the Championship, and I went to uh, it was at a twelve thirty kickoff, and I think like that you, you saw the like in the weather spoons at Centre Parks. Oh, uh, it was phenomenal! I was <laughs> fifteen years old. I was the only person in there. I was like, oh, I'm here for Leeds game. Can you put it on? And that was like the the start of like the the Fraser Richardson era because I remember him. He was always a name in the reserves on. Football yeah. manager was like, always oh, in a team, and they had a uh, Danny Pugh, I think I remember. Danny Pugh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think they might have even got beat that game because I thought I'd go down. I'll see Leeds. Oh, we did. And... Yeah, the first yeah. season, first season down, we were horrendous, like really bad. Yeah. And then we, and the second season was better, and then the third season we went down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke because, like, I know, like the the the, the Ridsdale saying and stuff. Like, we, we tried it, but the players that they had. Especially in 2000. Was that the season went to the semi-final, was it? 2000, 2001? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then, was yeah. it Valencia? Was it got beat by, was it? I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head, but I, yeah. We, I was it, it, it was just, we went to, obviously, UEFA Cup and Champions League, both deep runs in both. And it's like, yeah. why could they not? Like, why? Like, I might never see Leeds in Europe in my life. Like, mm. how unlucky is that? Like, mm. my grandparents, or their, their grandparents as well, would have seen Leeds be the best team in the country. Mm. Yeah. And I've got us, we just had Sam Allardyce in charge in the Prem. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's quite entitled to say. Like, that's enti- I know because like, where I've seen us, but like, I've seen us on like minus 10 points in League mm. One. It's like, how how unlucky do you get to be that oh. of a Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, obviously it spawned a great chant, didn't it, when you were doing well? Um, yeah. And yeah. it was it was a phenomenal season for the team like that that was that was amazing. But the, yeah, another thing, the that, ten, minus ten in the skip. That's what I call yeah, it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Another thing that people don't realise as well. I think um, in his last two seasons, so the season before they went down and the season they went down, Viduka got over thirty five goals for Leeds. I think thirty two goals maybe for Leeds in the last two seasons. He was an absolute you monster. Know my favourite stat ever is not even to do a lead. It's like Darren Bent in 2010 got 20, didn't he get 25 Premier League goals and still didn't yeah. get in the World Cup squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, you've got so many and I might that's, get that it. Was, that's proper, um, like, just seems to be, even, even well, even now is, the, is there's an element of it, but just back then, like, just, no, unless you play for the top four clubs, you're not getting it. You're uh, not playing it, for it. It was a proper 90s hangover, because even when I played for top clubs, it was it was about preference, because you had Andy Cole, who hardly got any caps for England. You had Robbie Fowler, he hardly got any caps. Les Ferdinand, all these players that used to get 20 goals a season and never never got call-ups, and then it kind of hung over into into the 2000s, and, and nowadays they're just spread about between inverted wingers and uh, the like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 24 goals. 
you got, yeah. Cracking player. Cracking punt it as well. Really enjoyed him this, uh, this afternoon on the uh, Ipswich. Right. I was I was gutted when, when the United were losing, fucking losing at that too, you know, losing at half time with a man sent off and then fucking there's no Roy Keane. I see uh, Ashley Young. That's not what you want. That's woke nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you know, away days absolutely massive. I'd like to, I'd, I'd love to live vicariously for you because you get to go on these away days you also get to talk to uh, <laughs> football players about classic shirts which is something that you know I think is every every football fan's dream really I mean football shirts we could have done a whole new different episode of, on football shirts I mean for me Perk, like I'd love to collect, my dream is to collect the T90 templates the one that Michael's wearing there like I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd love to have every one of them because I think it's one of the best kit designs in history um, are there any football shirts that you're still sort of uh, seeking or any that you're uh, quite sought after for you for your own personal collection? Yes, yeah, so we got to this weird point with the channel, like obviously because it's called Away Days and obviously that I made in lockdown, like I am, I am obsessed with football shirts and like I still like, like get to show that on the channel with the shirt shopping series. It's just more like I get a joy out of seeing other people get the joy now because I've mm. got every... Weirdly, I saw obviously that, not to get into life, but like my life's... My life situation changed. I was, with, I was with a partner. We lived in somewhere bigger. I then was single, so moved to my own place. So my interest in buying football shirts was not as high because I was trying to uh, pay rent and whatever and just like, live by myself. So then like, people that obviously took a knock on the content and people were like, oh, Ellis, why don't you buy shirts anymore? Then the, obviously the more <laughs> truthful, even more so on that as well, is like I've got every shirt I sort of want other than like two. So it was like mm. I wanted a match war messy shirt. That became a big saga. Got That's that. my next question, to... so... <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll save it. Uh, but there, there is there is a couple. There's um, I want the Leeds 1972 FA Cup final shirt somehow. But that that one is, like, I think it's just special, like, just the the shirt. And then also there is the FC Porto uh, Adidas Ipswich template, which are, the Ipswich mm. template is the most iconic football shirt yeah, template yeah. of all time. One that Holland wore for the 1988. Yeah. Uh, the geometric design. Yeah. And Porto wore one. Like I've got the off-brand one. retro version of that shirt. But. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They've got like a, um, they had like a European Super Cup game, I think it was, or a Cup Winners Cup game, one of the two parties. They wore it for one game against Tottenham. Uh, and you can only get it match one, obviously. So I know classic football shirts have three of them. So I keep, post oh. I'm constantly like, can you just sell me one? And they're always like, <laughs> no. Why? They're just sat in no, there. It's just a classy shirt, wear. to be fair. Have, have you got my favourite shirt of all time, which is the 92, 93 Leeds Away shirt, the blue. Is that your favourite shirt of all time? Yeah, I love that shirt. And I, mean, I don't know if you know, but well, uh, you probably will, but James and Fee and uh, Admiral have done a redistribution of them as well, so yes, I am going to buy them yeah. on the website. But yeah, I, I don't know if that's one of the shirts you've got in your collection or not, because that is a gorgeous shirt, the blue one. And the yellow yeah. one, but that's that's super rare, I think. What, the was, the, what was the hardest one to get hold of, Alice, of, um, of the ones you wanted? Well, so it, <laughs> well, ignoring the messy one, there was, <laughs> was a very famous... There's always an image to go around. I think there's always articles and 442 did one of the 100 best shirts of all time. And there's this, Fiore, obviously Fiorentina sponsored by Nintendo. Yeah. Um, there's always the image of Batistuta doing that. And they always share the away shirt from that year with Mario on the front. But that's a mm. fake shirt. It doesn't exist. It's not a real shirt. Like it's not a real thing. The obviously Nintendo sponsored one exists, but not with Mario on it. Like that's not a thing. Like they never wore that. That's just bootlegs by people in Mexico. So people like, but that it gets through all the aggregators and whatever and stuff like that really annoys me. Um, but it's not real. But they actually did have an item of clothing with Mario on it. They had a um, a training shirt with Mario on it. So I spent like years trying to find it, and eventually found a um, Fiorentina collector based in obviously Florence on eBay. And messaged him said, "Did he have one?" He was like, "Yeah, the price is like X, but you have to come and collect it in person." So I flew to Florence. In one day, got up at six a.m., went to Stansted, picked up the shirt, then got back home and in bed by midnight. Wow. Just to like go and get the shirt. That was like, like that was like two years of messaging people. Like, how do you have one? Do you have one? Do you have one? Um, but like I said, I'm in this really entitled position with shirts now, and I don't really enjoy it because like football shirt hunting, I love. Like, you go into a shop, is there a shirt in there? Who knows? Like charity shop hunting and whatever. But now it's like got to the point of like the only way I can describe it is if you ever played like a mobile game, or like a game that's pay to win and you don't pay, but yeah, suddenly you do up. pay once and then you lose all fun. And you've lost all the fun in it because you've cheated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, like, if I want a shirt, I just tweet out being like, "Can anyone help me with this?" So like, even well, the yeah the the this one. 
Yeah. There. I don't know if you've, you guys have seen the tale and the fable of the Match One Messi shirt, um, which spawned one of the best YouTube series for me on there just for yeah. stress. Um, I don't know if you you want to retell that story because that's one time your your influence did, didn't work at all. <laughs> no, no. So I I basically decided that like I was going to make the culmination of all the football shirt stuff. That I would get a match or Messi shirt because like obviously I go like yeah, what a player he is. By the way, um, oh. it's like, it's <laughs> he's half decent, isn't he? Yeah, he's decent. Um, so I was like, <laughs> I'll do that. I'll, I'll try and find one. So. It just, I, I then went through so many people and then like realizing down this rabbit hole is like how corrupt, crooked and yeah. back was the match one shirt selling community is. Because like, it's not like, like the thing that America does really well, like in hockey and baseball, like anything this game used is like stick it instantly. So, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas I like, don't do it in football. Mm -hmm. Like even like companies that sell match worn shirts have been caught getting it wrong, which is meant yeah. Um, so anyway, I found one of the most reputable sellers in America, a guy from, called Ronnie Almeida. And he said, he'd, the amount of fraud this guy committed is unbelievable. Like he was selling Maradona <laughs> things, De Stefano things. For some reason, De Stefano was his big one. Like he, I don't know why. Um, it really weirdly just him. But um, so he was messaging me like saying, hi, Ellis, I've been put in touch with you. And then here are the, here are the people I trust. Like some like six or seven like respectable collectors as well that had bought from him. So he brought, we brought down like an entire operation. I didn't actually, because he now sells under a different name on the US's <laughs> biggest sporting auction site, which is another topic for another day. Actually, <laughs> get a whole video out of that. Um, <laughs> but he basically, I went over to America. I was in Orlando on holiday and we met him and I paid like $7,000 for the shirt because it had a signed letter from Christian Stuani's family confirming that they'd switch shirts. <laughs> completely fraudulently made this up i messaged christian christian stuani's sister on facebook she was like i've never heard of this man wow and then i submitted it to a photo matching company and they were like he never wore the shirt so uh -huh. i was just seven thousand dollars down on a shirt that messi had never worn um and, but obviously, there's a but. It's not really a but. I eventually ended up did I ended up did getting one. Yeah, that, well, that, that was that was yeah, the that's third that's 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 that was the third attempt, wasn't it, with the uh, the fellow in Yeah, so the first time I got one in the mystery box <laughs> turned out to be fake. But that was that was different because I didn't inherently buy a match or message. This guy was just trying to get his name out there and sold me a mystery box with it in. Then third time was I met this guy in Paris who just used to be a Ezekiel of Etsy's driver, and like this one <laughs> was worn by Messi. He just PSG played a friendly against Barca in 2012 for Herbalife for some reason, you know, a pyramid scheme funded friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Betsy swapped shirts of Messi at half time and just gave the shirt to his driver because he knew he was a Barca fan. So, and then the driver just sold it to me. I was like, this is amazing. And actually, like, got photo matched evidence. And, like, yeah, Messi did wear that shirt. So, just upstairs in my house is a match wall Messi shirt, which is like, just. Oh, well. Oh, unbelievable! I probably I, don't, I still don't know if I get it framed or not. I probably should, but like that is like the that moment was where I felt like okay, we've done everything you do in shirts. The world's opening up again. I can get back to like because the way it is is my first love, and I obviously love football shirts. And I like how we've now pivoted that to being. I love hearing other people talk about shirts because I have strong opinions on them, and I've got the ones <laughs> on. I've got like 300, 400 shirts, but like I rotate and will wear all the time. Mm. But like they're the ones I love. I don't need to buy anymore. And it's like, but people don't like that. Obviously, people people want to see more of it. But I do feel my my actual opinion on that as well. If I brought back the series where I hunted for football shirts, I think people would be like, "Oh, I didn't." You know, you you want it until you get it. Basically, mm. Mm. I'm a I'm a big fan of. Uh, I mean, the one I'm wearing now is kind of bruised banana effect. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand <laughs> one. However, I, I paid seventy five pounds for it RRP. Um, but <laughs> the problem is, is what I, I don't know if you have this issue. Whenever you like play football, whenever I play five aside, and I like I wear you know like this or I don't know a retro shirt. I'm a big fan. I put it on, and then they go, right, uh, James, your team of bibs. And I'm like, oh, no, I've got to with this now. It was, it, was meant, it was meant to be a talking point. I wanted you to ask you where I got it from. It was meant to be a talking point. Yeah, it wanted to be a talking point. You also wanted it, and then you've been you've robbed of it as well because you're going to sweat on it and now it's going to be washed as well yes. so that's the whole thing yeah. you've not got the match one James point. Allen I mean, yeah 
There yeah. was a guy I played last week with a guy who had a Verde Bremen top on, and he skimmed past me. And as he as he ran past me, he had uh, uh, graphite graphite on the on the back. And I went, "Oh my god, he was great!" And then he. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite one I've got to wear is that one. So if you know any shirt restorers, I need a Volkswagen logo, Ellis. Yeah, there, there is actually a really well-known um, shirt restorer on Instagram. He's like massive. Fuck. That's a great shirt. Yeah, that was three quid on eBay because it didn't have a sponsor that. Ten years ago, I was ahead of the trend. I've got, <laughs> I've got this, this Dinamo yeah. Tbilisi one where you can see yeah. the badges rubbing off because this is six years old. But this this cost me like, I thought, oh, it's, we're in Georgia. It won't be too expensive. Um, and it was like 80 quid. So, yeah, I think that's years ago as well. That is, that's pre boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It cost, it cost a lot of money. But I was, I, it was one of them that I, I'd taken it, I'd taken it to the, because uh, as a big boy, and a lot of things don't fit me usually. So I took it, I made the thing of going, yeah, that looks like it fits. Took it to the counter, and then I'm already too deep now. So whatever she says, I'm going yeah. to have to pay. So, but it's also this thing as well. Like, I do stand by buying a shirt in a store is always makes it more desirable. Like mm. getting a shirt in the store and physically being there. Like if you go to like the San Siro and buy a shirt, like that is the best way to do it. Like I think my favorite, um, my favorite uh, club shop I've ever been in um, will always be uh, Sheriff Terrace Balls, as it's okay. in it's inside a leisure center and you can smell chlorine. Wow. It's like it's like it's like just inside a swimming bath. And it's like there's one woman with like a clothes rail. It's fantastic. <laughs> they beat Real Madrid in the Champions League, and that's the club shop. That's amazing. That is a <laughs> yeah, You can I smell the glory uh, in the club shop. I went to do I went to Maribor. I've mentioned it, but Maribor was great because they've got a big plaque where it says we played Wigan Athletic ten years ago. <laughs> uh, but that's quite cool that I quite like that they've they've honored that. The Slovenian national team store was amazing because they've got like wow. a big they've got a shirt where the team played in the 2002 World Cup. And yeah. uh, I went with my uh my my now wife and her mum and dad and kind of forced them to come in with me. Uh which which you know they loved. Um and uh, <laughs> the only shirt available was like uh, the cut like the um Oh, what do you what do you call them now? Uh, pro form, what like the player issue, player issue? Yeah, like player uh, player spec. Oh, so and, like uh, very oh, mate, it, was, it was doing me no favors whatsoever. <laughs> but I gripped my teeth and I bought it, and I've never wore it since. <laughs> so yeah, walking around and thinking I'm blooming Robert Corrin. Anyway, um, <laughs> do, you, do you have any uh, do you have any favorite non leads Barclays men that you were you you you, you admired as a child? Just loved Morton Gamps Pedersen. Loved him. Like, really yeah, loved him. Absolutely. I, I, he's, he's, the problem is, he's, I don't feel like a hip. He's too, he's too on the nose. It's like, he's you, too, you know, yeah, he's a bit too on Throw off, Ellis. Pick someone a bit yeah. more hipster for it. It's like <laughs> me <laughs> too, isn't it? First to the name, think, but yeah. yeah like, like, everybody Michu did. Is like, Michu is like, no one remembers of Michu as well. He was shit by the end. His legs were gone. He was rubbish. Um, mm. Doesn't matter. You know what? I loved it. My favourite Swansea player from that era was Jonathan de Guzman. Oh, oh good man. player, Jonathan yeah. de Guzman. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What a he, boy. He, I, I, um, he had a, I think his brother, um, I used to sign on FIFA as well. Was called like G- Jerry de Guzman. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. He played for Canada for years. Uh, Besiktas, yes, he played that, didn't he? he? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We need uh, seen him at Anfield. Like Billy Letdenov. Oh, 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 yeah. yes. Loved him. Just, just could not be bothered to play football. Just couldn't be bothered. No. He but when he did, yeah, that one game in, when he first played his debut for Everton, and they thought, "Fucking hell, we've got a world here." And then, <laughs> yeah. in, a bit of re- in a bit of research for the uh, Everton Daily Barclaysman thing, been doing, uh, Billy Elton has been called up to the Russian armed forces as of last year. So, wow! Oh god, he's fighting in Ukraine. <laughs> wow! There we go. Should have scored more goals well, in the in Premier League, league shouldn't right? he? <laughs> <laughs> he? He was in that. Um... Russian New Year's 2018, and I think that was. It's always it's always a, a gamble, isn't it? After an international tournament, when a player has a good tournament, you're like, oh, we should capitalize on that now. Like you look at when Madrid signed James Rodriguez, and mm. you know Arsenal went in for Arshavid, and I think like they were they were great for a little bit, and then it just kind of petered off. And I think Spurs, uh, Spurs went in for Pavlyuchenko. Pavlyuchenko is the one. Yeah. And I think Everton were kind of like, oh shit, we should. We like, should I think do. they went in for him as well, and it didn't happen. It was Yerkov as well, weren't they, at Chelsea? Yeah. yeah. Well, Zach Owen, nobody went for, did they? Every, for yeah, years, I was, I was like, who's in for Zach Owen? And like, yeah. yeah, probably good you didn't, yeah. 
Yeah. One of my favourite plays of all time because at Euro 2012 he turned up and was mint for three games. Oh, yeah. And he just <laughs> doesn't do anything now. Oh, and the, uh, was it as well as Juve who was like, who nearly, nearly, oh, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nailed, on, yeah. nailed on Burnley signing Artem Juve. Nailed on <laughs> Burnley man. Cherry <laughs> Chev as well. Yeah, a suspiciously good World Cup, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was he on? Yeah. What was something? Yeah. Well, I, think, I think I think let you know let let, let players take performance enhancing drugs. Right, let's see what happens. You see, like <laughs> the stars. I think we should yeah. do it on the Olympics. Have a non-drugs in a drug league, like. Sorry, just... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think of like more like absolute standout ones to me, like just like. I loved just like niche players. I was never like, never drawn to the like the big, the big. I was just like, like as you know, Shea Given was my favorite keeper. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved him the line and um, just like they, they, they're proper. I was as, as someone who's a goalkeeper growing up, like proper, proper goalkeepers. Oh yeah, yeah. All, all Shea, the, all Shea the Given best, was wonderful as a keeper. All the best keepers used to play for like the bottom half teams, didn't they? Yeah, Al Habsi, Yasker Line, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Franco de Santo, I loved. Franco oh, de Santo. Oh, Santo. Talk to you about yeah. Franco de Santo. He was he was just like eight goals a season for some reason. And he's like, it's fine. That's that's fine. You do that for Wigan. That's all right. He was, <laughs> I can't, was he good for Schalke? Who cares? Like, have know. you ever seen the video? <laughs> have, have you seen the video when he was at Schalke? I can't remember whether against, but it was in the the German Cup, and he found a spider on the pitch and put it down Leroy Sané's back. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy <laughs> Sander didn't know what to do. He, was, oh, he took his shirt off in the middle of the pitch and just shook this spider out. Legend is DeSanto. He's still, yeah. he's, he's he's still, still playing. A two-time FA Cup winner. And he's, yeah, he's only 36 years old. Two he's time. still playing, yeah, so much. Two-time Chelsea and Wigan he won the FA Cup with. I thought it was at Chelsea as well. Like, there was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The was, medals at both. Like, Danny Pacheco. Like, he went oh! Off. Now you're talking. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's back back in them days, I had a, I had a membership with Liverpool... Uh, TV and used to watch all the youth team games and him support, and... You've, you've outed yourself as supporting about 14 clubs in this episode, man. I haven't. I'm, I'm a York City fan, <laughs> um, but my, my team from when I was a kid... Liverpool. No, I, I was an ad, ad hoc Leeds fan <laughs> to try and get my friends back involved because they were boring and they, they didn't like Football League football because it wasn't on the telly and I wasn't a, agreeing with that. But yeah, yeah um, Danny Pacheco and uh, what was that uh, striker called, James? Uh, Adam Morgan. Remember Adam, Adam Morgan, Morgan, yes, he scored yeah. against Hearts. He really qualified. Yeah, yeah, they had they had some players that, that everyone thought was going to come back through, and then the one, the two that did were uh, Suso and Sterling, and they were the only two that came through. Yeah, and Jordan Ross, Lazar Markovic, Jordan Ross, uh, yeah, Lazar Markovic, Lazar Markovic, number fifty. Oh. If that goal had gone in, his career would have been a different story. One, one, it, one, um, every single league title of his career before he joined Liverpool. Michael, uh, would you like to uh, introduce to our, our sort of game, our game feature to, 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 to wrap up with? Yes. Um, so we've played five games of this now. It's completely random players from, 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 from a team that's been selected. Fionn uh, is like a rabbit in the headlights when it comes to it, even with his beloved Middlesbrough. Um, yeah, I sure. would, um, for Curtis to the guest, go with Leeds United, but they, they weren't there. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> <laughs> the team which you've got to select from, we're going to have, well, how many minutes should we say, James? You can decide, mate. I don't know, maybe, like, should we do five? Five oh, minute time gosh. limit, yeah. Oh. James first, Fionn, as many names as you can. If you drop yeah. out, you lose your life, you're out. And the team's West Brom. West Brom. Oh, we, just say, yeah. we say a name and then it goes to the next person, next person, next person. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Yeah. Just one player that played for West Brom, like I say, I know we're not going to pick too many from 90s, are we? Because they weren't right good. But, um, like, era, yeah. just any player, even if they play now, um, just get as many random names as you can and try, if you can, be the first guest to get on the leaderboard. James is 3-1 up. Yeah, you could, you could easily yeah. beat, beat me, uh, Ellis. So. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and yeah. I, I, who's, going, who's going first? I'll who's start. Going? Stop watch now. Who's going first? James. On, you go. Right. Kieran okay. Richardson. Uh, Nasser Chadley. And is it me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's my hill. Anu. Uh, Dean Kiley. Robert Earnshaw. Uh, Chris Brunt. 
Ben Foster. The, the, Dow DK. Oh, wow. Peter yeah. Allen Wingy. <laughs> uh, Yusuf Malumbu. Ooh. Excellent. This is this is so hard, isn't it? Alex Moat. <laughs> Yo, this yeah. awesome. Um, Chris Iwelmo? Iwelmo? No. No. Did, did he not he play? Won't. He was not. He was also alone at York as a youngster, and he was useless. Uh, oh, no, I don't, he didn't do West Brom. So James, quick, go for another. Otherwise, oh, you're uh, in. Okay, um, Jonathan Greening. Go on, you can have that. Yeah. Uh, oh, who was the one who scored the goal? The Jeff, someone who scored a goal, and then he kept them up, and it was Jeff Horsfield. That's the one. Gareth McCauley. Yeah. Um, oh Christ! Zoltan Gira. Zoltan. Oh, what a shout. Uh, this is horrible. I hate this so much. Uh, 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 Sam Johnston. Yeah. James Morrison. Yeah. Uh, Robert Corrin. Yeah. No, 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 no. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I haven't got one. Think back to the Earnshaw days. There's players who play with Earnshaw with the T Mobile kit. And... Yeah, but even still, that is just. <laughs> I'm out. I think I can't. I'll just throw a name out there. Grant Hall. Oh, no. give me another game. Take your time, mate. Go on. Can I have Sorry. another 15, 20 seconds. There's a Northern yeah, Irish centre midfielder who they. Oh, Chris Brunt. Have we had Chris Brunt. Yeah, yeah. We had Chris Brunt. There was a there was a Northern Irish chant, and there's playing Lampard, just Stevie Gerrard. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I can't. No. I'm not, I'm not Quick goalkeeper out. guess to keep in. Scott Carson? Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> There's not, not Northern Irish, but I think the fellow you were thinking of was Graham Dorans. No, wow. no, it wasn't Graham Dorans. There was a, I was a irritant, but we'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> um, Saido Berino. Yeah. Saido Berhina. Berhina, oh, sorry. Yeah, come on. Pronunciation doesn't mean anything. Who found a Pulis? No, they didn't have Pulis. Oh, my God, that's awful. They did? Uh, they did have Pulis. But I'm not going to test my internet at the minute. So. They have Hoof? Hoof is no, no, he, no. no, he not played for West Brom. Okay, that is me out, surely. Uh, <laughs> oof, right. Well, uh, 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 what, uh, uh, right, hang on. Um, Diamante Cameron. Excellent. Um, the only person Gabriel to score more goals than Aruna Kone for West Wigan in a Premier League season. There you go. <laughs> oh. Gab- Diamante Camera. Gabriel Tamash. Nope. And James. Gabriel Tamash. Oh, yes. He's a good. That's a good show. Um, I see now I've run out of fucking players. Oh, uh, I found the Northern Irishman, but oh, uh, I don't want to give it away. Stephen Davis. Have you already said him? Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis. I love him. Ah! <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Chris Baird if we're giving one away for each other. Chris so. Baird. Who's... Oh, I've got another. Go on, your turn. Aaron, uh, Aaron Hughes. Was he there? The only he? man. The only man until last year hadn't scored a penalty since the death of Ronnie Corbett. Salomon Rondon. Oh, well, oh. Um, Grady Diangana. Wow. Yes. Uh, uh, Ishmael Miller. Yeah. Josh I thought Magic. he was going to be good. Charles, him. Barnes. Charles Barnes. 40 seconds. Charles Barnes. Uh, oof. Um, fuck. Where's uh, Payne Elders? Strikers. Um, I'm going to lose this again. Um, Boaz Myhill. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Uh, Nicky Shorey. Wow. Um, it's oh. just unbelievable levels to this, by the way. Oh, uh, just just, just fucking painful. Deep end. <laughs> oh, um, oh. Uh, Jeff Bridgewell. Three seconds. Wack is also £20 pound note. Lee Bridgewell. Yeah, That's you, it. You, 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 You've won anyway because you've just gone twice in a row. And it's done, James. <laughs> and no victor in each of you. Did he say you're Kushlu? What's that? Saying, mate? You're Kushlu, isn't he? Like uh, the. No, is, is it him? They signed like a CDM. Oh, Krikoviak, wasn't it? Oh, Krikoviak, yeah, yeah. yes. 
Yes. Uh, from Seville. Yeah. 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 He's, wow. just gone, he's, he's just gone to um, friend of friends of the show. Um, this is Mapper, the Cypriot lad, Stasos and Stel. Um, he's just gone. Uh, he's just gone to um, Anorthosis Famagusta as wow. a Krakovia. Still playing. I love, Giant I love Jason that. punching that... over in Cyprus. Yeah. So yeah. that is. Um, yeah, Jason Punchin plays in the second division of Cyprus. Wow. Just loves the weather. Loves, yeah. the, <laughs> loves the weather. Yeah. Wasn't, one, yeah. wasn't that one of Becchio's most famous goals for Leeds, that uh, Millwall? No one, yeah. Becchio could raise the roof there. Oh, the noise when that yeah. went in. Yeah, unreal. Uh, like, oh, uh, we, and they got beat. Saw... Oh, no, it was, it was a draw, wasn't it? Yeah, then we lost the yeah, second leg. Yeah, yeah. No, lost the, that was the second leg, but the, the, I think it was a 1-1 draw. And yeah, we, went, we lost. Did we lose the home, then draw away, or maybe the other way around? Uh, two, two of his biggest moments, anyway, weren't that they were in losses. <laughs> But the the, yeah. uh, the the first one was <laughs> Chelsea at home, on it. Chelsea in the yeah, Chelsea at home in what a cup. We also, we also oh. won one against Everton in the cup. Ad White, we might have won that game. Ad White, I, yeah. I I always remember the uh, a quote about Becchio, and it was uh, he is unbelievable as long as you don't give him the ball outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, um, my, fa- my, my not my favorite, my least favorite probably. Um, I remember. Uh, my first ever home game I went to at uh, Borough um, when I was like eleven um, was uh, was Beck because I've been to because uh, my dad would only take me so I was like five, was it five six seven due to laziness would only take me uh, when I was a kid to like Blackburn away and Burn, Burnley away and stuff <laughs> um, but I remember when I first went up there. Um, I remember Becchio scored either a hat trick or twice, and they were both world. And it's like, oh, oh yeah. ruined me day. No, I saw. As a bit of a sound bite, we can clip Ellis. Can you just, uh, I mean, just describe to us what uh, Becchio and Beckford mean to you? <laughs> Becchio and Beckford are everything to me. <laughs> they, they're not, it's, it's like you have, you know, like you have this childhood innocence. And like we had. Like I, we win, the thing is in the one we won most weeks, right? And that them as a duo were just like I love I just loved them. Like they were so oh, they were so good, weren't they? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also ridiculous that you know, yeah, Beckford sort of bit revisionism from him. He did leave the club and now he works for the club. You know, obviously people can leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no, I'm tr- like, obviously he had to move to the Premier League, but a bit of a sour taste of him when he did the what shirt am I wearing, bruv, and then next week pretty much joined Everton. So. Oh, what shirt am I wearing? Yeah. Name, wearing. Um, no, but I, I just it was just them two were just unbelievable. And they they weirdly were better, like Becchio probably was better without Beckford there, to be honest. Like he he um, could flourish and like his nearly single-handedly got us we, we were gonna get the playoffs that season minimum before he joined Norwich. Like just he was he was a joke. I loved them and like they they were prop. They were like this last bit of innocence before we became leads again. You know what I mean? Like they, they were, they, they were the foundations. Like the Becchio winner against Bristol Rovers. Like yeah, the yeah. Board, like just they were the block, the the blocks to how we are, who we are now. And they, I don't think well, it's weird to say without Becchio and Beckford, we don't get Bielsa. So it's like mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. with with Becchio, it was so shit because in League One, Leeds had a former Boca Juniors and Barcelona striker up front. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy, and it's, it's weird. Like he, he would have been the Barca you set at the same time as Messi. It's yeah, like, yeah. like ridiculous, and then he just came to Leeds. It's, it's like <laughs> how do you end, how do you end up? How does that? He even was happen? recommended by Marcelino, wasn't he? The lad who used to play for Newcastle. Was I don't it? know how that came up in conversation, but a fellow who played eight games on loan for Newcastle in about two thousand and three, midfielder, he recommended um, Becchio come for a trial. Um, then the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. The headband, you just yeah. are. Just, yeah, it was, it was, it was like, the, it was, yeah, yeah, he was just a fan of the team. Championship at the same time as Leeds were good with Becchio. He was a proper villain because he'd just show up and ruin your fucking day every time. <laughs> yeah. he'd, never, he'd never play well, but he'd always score. He was yeah. like that. <laughs> Pretty much. No, I remember like when I was younger in League One, I really didn't rate him. Like, it was always Beckford. It was yeah. Beckford this, Beckford, Beckford that. Was, and yeah, like, it was unreal. Then championship was like, oh my god, like this, and I can't believe it didn't work out. I mean, I'm yeah, it's just weird. It didn't work out at Norwich from at mm. all. Not not at all. 
Speaking of championships and the other areas, a few uh, names to reel off to you to ask a quick question, and that's Yorkshire Evening Post, Admiral, Thistle Hotels, Packard Bell, Strongbow, White and Mackay, Bet24, Red Kite Holdings, Enterprise Insurance, 32 Bet, SBO Bet, and Boxed, which is the best one? Share sponsors <laughs> for Leeds. Yorkshire Evening Post, I think, is like the, is the that one. That was a I lot mean, of, the, the Strongbow league title was won yeah, with that yeah, on yeah. it, wasn't it? Yeah. Strong, Strongbow is a good one. Top Man. Top Man's a good one. Top Man, yeah. yeah. Top modern man. Ones. None of the modern ones are good. It's just like, we had a betting, the first season back in the Prem, Bielsa, likeable squad, but we could have pushed for you. We run like, we finished like six points off Europe and you've got like a Chinese betting firm in the front of the shirt. And was that like, SBO you know, top, was it? Yeah, SBO S- top. That's, it's like, it's, low top. It's a shame because that away kit, the green and black striped one is... It's, so it's, the home kit even is great. It's like, it's yeah. just all this, they're really good kits and it's just like ruined by... like. Every image of Rafinha playing for Leeds, he's got spoked up on that. Yeah. It's like, mm. that's crazy. Yes. He's he's got got yeah. it, don't they? We very yeah. much agree on that, Ellis, because like, I mean, there's a, like Borough have had Unibet for a few years, which is terrible, uh, but we had Ramsden's cash for gold. Ramsden's cash better. for gold. <laughs> um, but like, um, like, like I've seen, I seen a couple of things, like, one obviously Newcastle fans who are aware that who are like all oh, adults and are aware that new top, which is always like weird to me. And like you can you can get away with I think if you're above the age of eighteen, you can get away with wearing a retro shirt. That's fine. Yeah. That's cool. But if you're wearing the new shirt, mm, um, <laughs> yeah, unless it's really nice. Yeah. Um and then but like I remember seeing um with the SBO top fucking sponsor, these lads doing like Fulham fans doing like a um, like a grime video with like a Chinese betting thing that just yeah. didn't really... grime as well. Just don't, yeah. Yeah. And grime, yeah. 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 <laughs> do you have the um, do you have the, oh, the your shirts? The, I mean, it's a shame about the Red Bull sponsor, but that away shirt, the yellow one, is yeah, it's great, the, it's yeah, unbelievable. I yeah, I do have that. Um, I worked, we I actually was like the first one I ever worked with the club on was for I say worked, I would never take a penny from Leeds, but like I, I went and then we did like a promo thing for it and gave the shirt to a few fans and I got to keep it from that shoot. Wow. And we've also just released the Adidas Originals like retro stuff, that's really great. Um, um, yeah, the away shirt this season is so good, and it's, it's it, the Red Bull isn't as egregious because it's yellow and blue, so it's fine. Mm. I, actually, I actually think it looks like quite a good sponsor. Mm. And as much as I hate what Red Bull have done to football. I don't mind a drink. I actually quite like the taste. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna ask you, yeah, so like do you, do you worry about obviously becoming Red Bulls Leeds or Leeds Raid Leeds Racing Bulls or whatever? No, I don't I don't worry about it because if they ever did, like football will be dead to me and I'd have yeah, um, yeah. less one less loss in my life. <laughs> I'd be like <laughs> by that point I'd just be like, okay, I'll watch baseball now. Yeah. I don't think they'd never be able to do that to a to a British club, especially one you never, and such, they, they just, such a history as Leeds. Like, wouldn't happen. You couldn't do it to Leeds. No. I say, but, but I, I always... Yeah. Clubs have done it previously were old clubs, but like, I mean, Austria Salzburg is probably the most egregious, or Casino Salzburg, whatever they call themselves, but the most egregious one. But even then, it wasn't. Then I went Leeds United. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, FC, yeah, FC Life are in isn't quite the Leeds United, is it? Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> Leeds, Leeds, Leeds have got such like a strong heritage. And I still find it so weird as well, obviously, with the era I grew up in, that Leeds have spent more seasons outside the Premier League than they have in it. Like, yeah. that's absolutely yeah. barmy to me because they're, they're still, to me, one of the top. Well, yeah, in, in like, I'm not going to say top six, but like, I consider we, them up there. Yeah, we've, had to, we've had people do. We've had people do like uh, definite like Barclays uh, tables and that. Some some fellow left Middlesbrough out, like the like left Borough out, left left Leeds out, um, and then for like like like, like we've pissed off Brentford and Bournemouth fans previously. I'm going to do it again. Because it's like Brentford, Bournemouth. Brighton is a bit different because, I don't know, yeah, I quite like Well, that. What are they going to do? <laughs> I, 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 think, I, like I think the problem with that was it was like recency bias. Like I, I was saying to Brentford fans, I was like, no, 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 you're still, you guys are still in like the incubation phase. You guys are still... You're, you're like, in your infancy. Time, yeah. Ten years' time, people will be screaming Brian and Buemo. Mm. And like... We're still, remember like, Ethan guys, Pinnock. Yeah, oh, what a defender. Now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've got yeah. to they've got they to serve the belt. time. Yeah, they've got a classic one. That Brian is it? Brian Jensen in midfield. He's going to go down as 
I definitely Matthias Jensen. Matthias, yeah. Uh, why am I saying Brian? There's no yeah, players so called no, Brian in Premier League, is it? Well, oh, Bueno, of course, yeah. Uh, Portman Toad, <laughs> two potential future Barclaysmen. There we go. Hopefully, uh, Red Bull give leads for wings to lift them above the top of the championship. <laughs> and uh, it would be great to, to, to have you back. I think, I think this season is the season. I mean, just, we are very good. And like the league yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. very good. I, think just, I saw, I saw right. Somerville play the other night and he's going to be a big miss. But yeah. Yeah. He's um, but Nyonto's there, Ramazani, like Mano Solomon. Um, let's ignore the reasons why that leads, but he's very good. Um, <laughs> like Junior Farpo, that level's a joke. Junior Farpo is like, if we were in the Prem, Barclays, man, just oh, the yeah, of, yeah, the, yeah, the leads of Ramazani, like Largi Ramazani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I've seen him play at Al Maria, he was class. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's wow. um, yeah, being able to get him at the level to replace. So, selling Jorginho was was one thing, but like just I thought Somerville. that was going to be the end with with the other striker as well. Um, with we, we lost Somerville, Somerville and Rutter. Lost Rutter, Archie Gray. But Archie Gray's brother's coming through, isn't he? Isn't he yeah, Harry Gray. Uh, also, uh, Brendan Aronson. He's been really good this season. Yes, so yeah, I think, I think we should. We will go up. I yeah, I saw, you, I saw you post about uh, Brendan Aronson at that level. Yeah, I just like being smug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His equaliser against uh, Portsmouth cost me 700 quid as well. Oh, yeah, and then he missed the sitter to win it like two seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> and as Ethan Allen yeah, that, and I was like, why the fuck couldn't you just miss both, you useless <laughs> yank? <laughs> is, Ethan, is Ethan Ampadu already in Leeds, Leeds folklore? Oh, maybe. He just He's very good. Uh, we, I think I he's finally know. found a football in home, hasn't he? Because there was a lot about him for about the last eight, nine years or whatever. Yes. But... Yeah, he's great. Um, and he can, he's great at centre back and centre mid. So it's like he's really good. So if we go up, it's like him and Rode on a like, so a few like players. Like, yeah. the, he, there's a few players in the team who are good enough to go up. But if we went up, and we'd probably still need like ten players. That's just right. how it is. So we'll see. One of one of my wife's favourite players, Joe Rodon. Uh, so there you go. But Joe uh, Rodon uh, experience. <laughs> yeah, Joe Rodon. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, she's a big Wales fan. So yeah, big, big, big. Okay. Amper, big Amper doing that. Uh, yeah, she's, she's Welsh. Yeah. Carl Dallow's there uh, now as well. Big wow. Wales fan. She's Welsh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Loads of Welsh players, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, but you'll you'll be you'll be back there in no time without a shadow of a doubt. Top Fingers half. crossed. So far, well, too big. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ellis, it's been an absolute Pleasure. I mean, we could thank we could you very talk, much. Mate. We could yeah. talk long into the early hours of the morning about everything. Ethan Ampadu. Ampadu. <laughs> yes, yeah. Ethan well, thank Ampadu. you so much for having me on, guys, and um, good luck with the the rest of the the pod as well. And I'll be I'll be keeping out to see if you have any lawsuits coming up against uh people taking the Barkisman trend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we, will, we will accept a large fee. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> where, where whereabouts can people find you? Oh, it's just uh, Away Days on YouTube is the best place to see my fallen adventures. Just different football game every single week. Uh, and it could be any level in the world, could be anywhere in the world. I like to keep people on their toes. So yeah. that, that is me. Coming soon to Ellesmere yeah. Part and Vauxhall Motors, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank, well, you thank, much, thank, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for having you, me. You can follow us at the Culture Pod on Twitter. Everything. Uh, it's everything. On everything much. Uh, the uh, yeah, you can follow us on all social media platforms. And yeah, stay tuned to next week where we'll have another episode. So cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.